when I first heard about this movie, I suspected that Brent Spiner was behind it because of the preview I saw on television as they were you know, getting ready to show it in 2000. And he just didn't strike me as somebody who could make a good movie about the Bible. When I watched it, I was impressed. You know, here I, I, I had studied the Bible my entire life, read it from cover to cover. I was amazed. Louise Lombard, I felt, really captured the spirit of Esther. It was like she was so true to Esther. It was as, it was as if Esther just jumped out of history and into this movie. And when I first saw this movie in Seattle in 2000, that was the year that I offered myself to Brent in marriage and had started my divorce proceedings against my ex. And when Mordecai beamed with pride, when I watched the movie for the first time and I saw Mordecai beaming with pride over his Esther and her ability to learn languages quickly and commenting about her royal blood, I thought, oh my goodness. Brent made that movie for me. I am so honored. And I, I was so honored by the Esther portrayal, too. And portraying her as somebody who, um, who he was so proud of and who learned languages quickly and commenting about her royal blood, I caught on right away that part of the reason this movie was made was to honor me. And I was honored. You see, when Franco Nero was my man, you know, when I kind of dumped Brent as a lover in my heart, even though I kept him as a friend from about 1996 to 1999, I became half fluent in Italian within two months in 1997. And I knew I, ha I had royal blood from my mother who sent me a Japanese movie called Homura Tatsu about my royal ancestors, the Oshu Fujiwara family. In fact, sometimes on my wiretapped phone, I spoke all Italian to Brent and Franco because I knew the Jesuits had added the King James only pastor of the church I was attending onto my phone's wiretap. You know, I told Brent and Franco over and over on the wiretap phone when I talked to them that I could size someone up by the expression that came from their eyes and that usually my first impression of them sizing them up this way I, which I, was, was dead accurate. I told Brent that I, if I had followed my first impression about my ex, I never would have married him because my first impression of him was that he was shallow. But church members talked me out of my first impression and convinced me that he was an outstanding Christian. And um, he, was, he was a regular church attender and everything. He put on a good performance. Um, but my first impression when I looked at him is I thought, this guy is shallow. Um, my first impression of Brent was that he was a man of, and this is from looking at his eyes, that he was a man of great depth and intelligence, but Laurie confused me about him later, temporarily. And, but, you know, in this film, my men have captured my compassion for the sufferings of the world in this movie. I'm a very others-oriented person often helping others to my own detriment. In fact, I'm doing, I do it right now. I devote hour and hour, hours and hours to making videos and keep maintaining my website and I don't make a dime from it. You know, it's just a, it's just a labor of love for Jesus and for the world to just try to promote justice. And the king in this movie captures very well how Brent made love to me on the phone with depths and longings and sensitivity. And when I saw him making love to Esther, I said, oh, wow, that's almost like Brent jumping out of the screen and making love to me. And then when he said silence is a rare gift in a woman, you know, I never told a soul in the 1990s how extensively Brent and I were communicating until I had to because my husband thrust Brent and Lori into the divorce proceedings to make me appear crazy. It was really hard for me to turn down Brent in 1991 and, and afterwards. And this movie captures some of that sadness that I had to turn him down to honor my vast and great savior. Once I figured out Lori was a Vatican agent, I sensed that Brent's feelings for me soared to the heavens. You know, Jesus tells us now that he was very proud of us back then for how we felt about each other. You know, when Brent gave me that three weeks of silence, he's actually, actually captured that in this movie. 
Brent used the king and Esther in these scenes to show how much pain Brent was in in September 1992 when Lori raped, drug raped him. Brent also understood that his silence distressed me in September 1992 and Esther's response to the king's silence was very, her response to the king's silence in this movie is very similar to how I responded to Brent's three weeks of silence against me in September 1992. And Haman in these scenes is a type of Lori McBride because Haman acquired his high position through murder, stealth, and cunning uh, using almost like Jesuit strategy. Uh, Lori threatened to kill me if Brent told me about her rape of him. And Brent knew she meant it because he had already been physically abused by her where she took uh, photos of herself abusing him and then threatening using extortion on him saying I'm gonna give these to the public and say you raped me when actually she raped him but you know people find it hard to believe that a woman would rape a man and that's just where the Jesuits took advantage because they realized that they, they rely heavily on stereotypes when they promote their agendas usually you think of a man raping a woman you don't think of a woman raping a man and especially if the man's a... those Jesuits are clever so Brent knew she meant it because he'd already been physically abused by her and um, and she took photos of of her abusing him and, and sneaking into his house to make it look like he'd had massive sex with her willingly and knowingly when he didn't want her threatening to make it appear that Brent liked having violent sex with her you know from the very beginning from the very beginning of my relationship with Brent I've always tried to protect him and warn him about evil people, just like Esther is in this movie with the king. I told him that I did not trust Paramount and suspected that the cute blonde, blonde he hung around with was very bad for him. I never thought she was his girlfriend, but I sensed that there was something un, very unhealthy about her relationship with him. And this was because I was seeing him through the eyes of love. When God told me that Lori was a Vatican agent in, in December 1999, I actually made some statements, written, I wrote some written statements for my divorce trial to help Brent in a legal case he had against Lori at that time to the detriment of my own divorce case because some of the statements I used in my divorce case I knew that Brent was using them in his case which was happening simultaneously at the same time as my divorce case he was using them in his case against Lori McBride where he charged her as a criminal against me and she was claiming like Zach is doing to me now that Brent secretly wanted her all along. When I realized that Lori was a Vatican agent, it just hit me like, it was like, it was like a huge wall and that Brent was up against an empire. I felt like, Gail, you need to be strong for Brent. I, I, can, I can really relate to Esther when she found out about Haman and his plan to kill all the Jews. That's kind of like how I felt when I discovered Lori was a Vatican agent. I was like, wow, I'm up against an empire. It's no wonder I'm having such, hard, such a hard time defeating this woman. God told me when I found out she was a, a Vatican agent and I could tell that my ex-husband was on her side. I could tell. He told me that if I did not exit this marriage, that I would die within a couple years. When I first learned about Lori, I prayed with my face flat down on the ground and my hands spread out before God for hours and hours for a whole month, prostrating myself on the floor in J July 1996. And Brent, I told Brent on the phone, that's what I was doing. I said, I'm praying for you because something's not right and I'm really worried about you. And this girlfriend, something's not right, Brent, and I'm going to pray and pray and pray. Well, I found out later that this birthday party, which is how I found out about her, she advertised in the Houston Chronicle she'd had a massive birthday party for Brent. She stole his credit cards and gave herself a birthday party and then hired somebody in the press to write about it. And that's how I found out about her. But I didn't know that back then. All I knew was I read in the paper from his mother that he had a that he gave a huge bat birthday bash to his girlfriend and I was devastated. It just didn't make any sense because he'd talked to me with, you know, loving me, kind of like the king loved Esther in this movie. So 
you know, when I found out and when God told me in December 99 that she was a Vatican agent, it was like, everything makes sense now. Oh, but it was so horrifying, so momentous to find this out. I realized that I had to marry him. That ever since this Vatican agent, Lori, extorted her way into Brent's life, that he had devoted his entire life to protect me from her, that he had put up with a criminal woman in order to protect me from her, even though he couldn't stand her, and even though I didn't have rock-solid evidence that he would marry me, I sensed in his heart that his love for me was vast. So I courageously offered this celebrity, whom I had never met face-to-face, -face, my hand in marriage on the phone. I cried. I said, oh, Brett, I'm so sorry that I, I kicked you out of my heart as a romantic interest. You're back again with full honor. Now that I realize this woman was a Vatican agent, she was so brilliant. She turned me against you. And then I had a peace in my heart that a love this fast, God would honor, that God would honor it. Because I knew my, my husband at that time would never sacrifice for me like this. As, as a result of my courage to be true to the vastness in my heart and in Brent's heart, Brent and I have saved the world. The ending love scene between Esther and the King mirrors, mirrors the emotional dynamics in my relationship with both Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin. The love that I have for the greatness in my men and our mutual passion for love, vastness, and justness caused me to write Conspiracy Law, which we have used to try and prevent another Jesuit Holocaust like they did with the Nazi regime in World War II. And they'll do it all over again. And they're very anti-Semitic, by the way. Which, and I happen to, I'm very, I have very strong Jewish genes. I have King David genetic profile and the anti-Semitic Jesuit leader, Zach Knight, wants to love me, it's not love. It's hate. He's, he'll destroy me with, if he does that. And he knows it. He'll destroy me. He'll destroy my testimony for Jesus Christ and he'll, just, he'll make it seem like the relationship I've had with Brent and Vladimir is a fraud. And that's what he's trying to do. I knew that I had to write conspiracy law in order to prevent another Jesuit Holocaust, I wrote it devoting hours and hours into it, knowing the law was brilliant and greatly needed, and my only pay was the satisfaction of knowing that this law would bring more justice into the world so that rapists and extortioners like Lori McBride, Camila Alves, and Zach Knight could not use treachery against the innocent and the great to make the good people appear evil and the evil people appear good, which is a Jesuit specialty. I wrote conspiracy law so that love and truth would prevail. I am so much like the Esther portrayed in this movie and am so honored that Brent obviously played a role in making this film because too much of my relationship with Brent is in this movie.